broke in a creative is such a real thing. Woo! Girl! <laughs> Don't even get me started on my... Honestly? Yeah. Hi babes, welcome back to my channel. My name is Diego, if you're just stumbling up upon this. And today we're kicking off a series called El Rincón. And I have a very special guest on here today. She's a photographer, she's a creative, she's a bad boss woman. This is Teresa. Hello everybody, yes, I'm Teresa. This space is gonna be one that centers around POC and Latinx experiences, whether that be creative, whether that be academically, just a space where we can have discourse, conversations, and things that affect our community and, you know, just vibe, you know? The vibes are here. The vibes are here. And Let's we're here. Send them out. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoy this video and, you know, stick around. We do talk about some heavy stuff. So, you know, thank you for listening and thank you for clicking. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Thank I've you, always wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy to be able to kick off this series with you. I think it's going to be really, like, important. Like just like part of the discourse, you know, because this needs to exist. Yeah. And here we are making it exist. It's yeah. So awesome. So today's topic is actually gonna be one that really hits home with us, especially with Teresa. It's gonna be paying your creatives. Yeah. Getting your creatives paid because you know what? What we do is work and we deserve that work and that labor to be recognized. So while we commence this, I'm gonna just be doing Teresa's makeup. You know, we'll just be chatting it up. Chatting it all, yeah. <laughs> Bueno. Well, there, there's this meme page, right, called Nine Kelvin on Instagram, and it's like photography memes, and <laughs> it says some really real stuff sometimes, um, because you guys see a lot of the product that we come up with, but a lot of the process goes um, unrecognized or unnoticed, and somehow it's like, wow, magically there's this amazing thing on my phone screen, but we don't often stop to think about all the work that went into those things. And I think that us as um, young people, as millennials with shorter attention spans and all this technology, it's really unmotivating because we think that it's all supposed to be instant and that's how we perceive the amazing things that others achieve. So if you're like a, a content creator, you get people sliding in your DMs, in your email, and those aren't messages, those aren't public, you know? Like that's not something that everybody like talks about all the time. And one thing that they always bring up or memeify is like how um, people will do work for exposure mm -hmm. and not for like money that they deserve. Um, because I know personally, a lot of the time I end up going, you know, I end up like en owing money or I go negative or this um, projects that I do put me in debt. And it's a labor mm -hmm. of love, of course, but you can't spread that labor and do that for everybody, especially if you're trying to do it for a company. And that's mm -hmm. not right, that it's unjust to expect that of an individual and value them so lowly or, or devalue them that way. Something someone's taught, um taught me just in the creative like field they said exposure does not pay the bills mm -mm. and it doesn't honey it, it doesn't, doesn't it really doesn't like echoing what you said like um it does devalue you when people sl slide in your dms and then they ask for work and then you give them a price mm -hmm. and even then when they like try to bargain with you it's kind of like it belittles you it, it belittles, belittles your you. work and then they don't, you can tell they don't grasp how much it takes, you yeah. know? Or even like, so I do photography and them trying to like bargain your prices and one really important thing is just to know your worth in the first mm -hmm. place and that's always going to be a journey, you know? And if you are seeking to always improve yourself, your value and your price is going to go up. I used to do lots of stuff for free and now I'm like, time and money is such a scarce resource that I won't um, accept anything that I don't feel is worth my time or my money or like money that I should be earning. Money, 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 money is mm -hmm. such a weird thing to talk about when you're talking mm -hmm. about art, but it's valuable work that people are capitalizing on. And a lot of the times that money isn't going to the creator, it's going mm -hmm. to other places. And I think um, hitting off on that, like if we go deeper, um, Teresa and I are both students at Cal, which is UC Berkeley. We both do come from lower income backgrounds and navigating this space as a creative can be really difficult, especially a low income household when you, like you see the way your parents live you see the way you live and in one hand it's like I want to feed my soul I'm a creative and this speaks to me and then on the other hand we have this institution telling us like money money like do this for your family right it's a lot of pressure for it creatives is, definitely I remember it took me so long to get started on photography a lot of the times so startup costs investing in yourself and investing in your equipment investing in your makeup me investing mm -hmm. in an expensive lens or a camera body those are all materials that are necessary for your craft that people have unequal access to you know so someone who's like 14 years old growing up with x y and z 
can have an amazing camera that I might have to work a year and a half for. And I remember I bought my first camera for prom. I was working when I was in high school. I was a waitress. I've worked every kind of job mm -hmm. you can imagine, you know? And it got stolen from my dorm room when I came here to Berkeley. And it took me a whole other year and a half to be able to earn that money back and mm -hmm. like um, be able to create again. Like when you're an artist, you that's it's something that you need to do. It's mm -hmm. part of your wellness, you know? So that was a really tough time. I don't think my skin has ever felt this way before. How does it feel? I feel like I want to like eat my own face right now. <laughs> what? Is that a weird thing to say? No. It's a weird thing to say. It's just, it just feels so nice. But if my skin was a blanket, I would like wrap myself in it. Yeah. Like, I was in the shower and then I walked back inside, right? And I had left that up with like a face mask on. <laughs> and she's out here like bumping cuckoo. And I come in and like she's dead asleep. Like just so beautifully and dead asleep. It was so beautiful. With my face mask on, I'll like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's such a weird thing to think about. Always trying to be very conscious and be a conscious creator, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, photography, I do a lot of like stuff in fashion. I guess that's what I'm talking about, you know? Like I met up with a designer today. Oh, well, don't worry, that doesn't fit me either. Don't worry, I can't even afford this either. And it's just like, well, isn't that sort of part of the problem? Um, if you're doing something and then you're trying to create an image that you think people will buy into, but it's not who you are and it's not what is the reality. That's another thing that we really need to take into consideration is like concepts of reality which is so strange you know because we live in an era of so many screens filters and mm -hmm. edits yeah like there's definitely a lot that gets lost in the process for example um similar to myself like you only get to see on screen what i put out but something that you wouldn't know about me either is that i've worked many jobs as well i've worked at a panaderia i've worked in a restaurant i've worked in retail like i've worked like all the odd jobs and being undocumented as well. I had to work jobs under the table like when I was first starting off before DACA even came up. Because mm -hmm. like I, I loved hair and I, and I loved uh, taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And then like all that money was just like, I saved up half of it and then my dad saved up the other half to get my first MacBook, you know? Th these are things that are so accessible for other people and other creatives. Yeah. And like, especially when we navigate spaces that are, um, where the creatives have a lot of privilege, I think it's difficult. It gets difficult. Like, it's hard not to get jaded by it too mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Or just like, damn, I, I would be able to do what they're doing if I had that. Mm -hmm. Like, on one hand, you have to acknowledge that because that's your own personal struggle and that should be valid. That is a very real part of what you're experiencing. There's no way that it's not valid. And at the same time, you don't want to like, diminish other people's value or worth because if you're talented, people are going to see that no matter what. Oh, I love. Oh my god, I feel like a fairy. <gasps> This is so cute. I have a pink wig. <laughs> and it would go so well with this look. That would look beautiful. <laughs> I mean, look at us. Highly educated, highly talented, highly dangerous. Oh my gosh. Okay. I felt like I was creatively dying for the longest time at this space because this space caters to the maths and the sciences and disregards all creative aspects. Definitely. For sure. So then like meeting Teresa here, it was like a blessing. And yeah, I know. I, I think it's like a really uh, beautiful thing when you find people that like help you shine. And like we're going to shine by ourselves. Yeah, sure. But I was messaging one of my friends the other day and he was like, I want to look at it because it's actually sort of yeah, cute. Go ahead. Oh my God, the DMs are too real. I can't right now. <laughs> yeah, so I was like telling my friends, um, my friend, I was like, I need to be... <coughs> nurtured spiritually, emotionally, physically. And then he was like, I thought you were already doing everything that you need to be doing. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And I'm like happy up to the 95th percentile, but the mm -hmm. other 5% or the other people, like external um, support makes such a difference, you know? Mm -hmm. I think we can all be pretty transparent. Like the creative spaces are obviously catered to a certain kind of individual and a certain group of individuals. Mm -hmm. and. I think that it's time to shed light on other creatives and to give true, diverse perspectives. And yeah. I, I'm hoping that this only helps propel something larger in the community. Definitely. And that's what it's about, community. Mm -hmm. It took me so long to find a creative community that I actually felt was fostering my growth because for such a long time I was doing it by myself. I didn't have any friends that were... Um, dealt in anything creatively directly or wanted it to make their, it their profession as well. Yeah, it's just, it can be difficult to stay motivated, stay mm -hmm. focused, to stay um, challenging yourself. In a bit, we should talk about like, what it means to be a creative in a Latin exalt hold. Okay. Like, that's a real question. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's some shit. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on you. Oh, now. of course. You are allowed to do and be as you please. Like, this space, I don't want it to be filtered. Like, 
<laughs> I'm not about that. Like, I'm so over that. Like, no. And thank you for, like, the DMs of people who have been DMing me and thanking me and saying, I'm so thankful for the raw and honest perception of yourself and other people that you bring onto the space. Because there's no other way I would want to live. Like, it's just so much... It, it would take so much out of me to, like, put up, like, this front. You yeah. Know? And I've put up the front before. Same. It really does take a toll on mm -hmm. you, on your like your mental health and what you produce. Because what's inside of your head and your heart is what other people are gonna see. So I've I've gotten into dark places where I felt like everything I was producing was shit, and it was, but it was because I was shit, you know, and I needed to work on myself. This is like coming together. I love. What do I want to be wearing with this? Something like pink and fuzzy. Mm. I just want to be drowned. Like I have a pink boa. Like those fluffy ones? I love that. Being broke and a creative is such a real thing. Woo! Girl! <laughs> Don't even get me started on like... Honestly? Yeah. I had an experience where I was at Soho House and we were meeting some friends who are very like affluent, you know, they have the coin, you know, and my fit was like a blazer, um, blacks from Calvin Klein, right, and some booties and little white see-through shirt. All of it was thrifted. Mm -hmm. All of it. And I looked like a hundred, right? There you go. And they were asking me like, oh my god, like, where's that from? Like, is it... They mentioned a name brand, I forget, right? Is it blah blah blah? And I was like, no, right? I was like, my outfit was literally like, what, like $20? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. Okay, this shirt yeah. is from Cotton On. Mm -hmm. It was like... I stole it because I'm a broke <laughs> bitch. And then I have these jeans that I thrifted for $2. I have a belt that I'm wearing that was also $2 at the same thrift store that day. These little holes that I use as part of my um, belt are meant for index cards, but I sort of just add them and oh, accessorize them. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah, I just like start layering. You just got to get creative with your creative self, you know, and just like start working yeah. on all this. I actually wanted to read a tweet out. It was actually something Amy tweeted. She said, Huge common misconception that designer clothes equal style. A price tag or a designer label has no effect on a person's style. No. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between having style mm -hmm. and displaying your yeah your wealth, your wealth or that you can afford to be on trend. Totally right. different things. It's like the most beautiful outfits I've seen have not have been curated not by a store, not by like designer labels. Like they've been yeah, they have some influence and incorporation of that designer label, but it's not like I'm wearing this brand, you know, it's just, it just adds to the outfit. It yeah. doesn't like become the outfit. Exactly, exactly. You know? And then even with like not being able to afford things, fake it till you make it. I've been, you know, phew, really good at that. Diego's like, you know, it's not that we're not about it and it's not that we're mm -hmm. faking it 100%, but in this industry, it is a lot about image. Mm -hmm. and how you present yourself and you can definitely present yourself with what you have it's just like how you execute it execution is key 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 i don't know i think personally i've been really 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 like my mom is absolutely amazing she mm -hmm. could give a shit about what i do as long as i'm happy she's yeah. like this is a sentence that's come out of her mouth she's like you could be like a nudist and i'd be happy like as long mm -hmm. as you're happy so i but i feel like since coming from casas de bajo recurso, mm -hmm. there is more pressure if you're coming from families or households of low income, there is more pressure to um, make it big or go into professions that are specific made for making, making lots of mm -hmm. bank, you know? Yeah. And people are doing things that make them unhappy because as like Latinx people or like people of low income, a lot of the times it's not just about you. You become a representative for uh, your people and you carry like everything on your shoulders. You carry more responsibility and um, not only worrying about yourself. I feel like being able to seek some type of higher purpose, in general, seek a higher education, seek mm -hmm. some type of meaning in life is a privilege. Because if you're a person that's burdened with more immediate f things, what am I going to eat today? Mm -hmm. What am I going to feed my children? You don't have time to think about, oh, your art artistic self. Like, that's mm -hmm. not a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's something that is often overlooked, too. It's a privilege to be able to have this education and to have, like, resources that help us pursue this higher, mm -hmm. um, some type of higher calling, you know? Which, yeah. in and of itself, is, like, a problematic concept yeah like even though like we do face our own like scrutiny and adversity as creatives in these spaces it's a privilege for us to even be creatives and our parents to support that as well like um personally for my um parents like they've been super supportive like they they literally same thing like whatever you do whatever makes you happy like that's it because they i think anything that i do they never had the opportunity to do so it's like a reflection of them like it's like 
they want you to experience everything and I don't know I think it comes from like a, a place of love and a place of not having anything you know yeah. it's like they want you to really make it because yeah. then they're making it too mm -hmm. my god my mom is just the most amazing creature in my life like ever yeah. I don't know she says like it's always just, just such a trip to see what her children do and what we accomplish you know because I guess they don't ima imagine it for themselves but past being able to imagine it yourself when you're not aware that these opportunities are available and you know if someone tells you oh you're allowed to do this or as a woman hey you don't have to dress that way and you're mm -hmm. subject to that way of thinking your whole life then that's the way you live yeah i've had i've definitely had um friends that um are creative like the way the system is like placed you know they've had to stop you know but that's why i think like it's important for us to voice these things out and like Definitely. do as much as we can to propel a better future for others like I can't wait for the day where like Latinx children like out here just like taking up space or just like oh my god I want to do this or I want to yeah. be like a photographer and a makeup artist or like pursue something other than hard as labor hard ass labor oh my god yeah. and a lot of the time that trauma or that labor or, like that physical exertion is um, intergenerational you know mm. because if you are unfortunately not able to put yourself in a position first of all because like you have to help yourself before you can help others right mm -hmm. so if you are not able to propel yourself um, into a more privileged position than you were originally born with you know, what's the sociological term for it um, upward mobility you know mm -hmm. if you aren't, aren't able to um, propel yourselves upward to like a better position in society mm -hmm. then you can't provide that for your children and then it becomes like a cross-generational thing too wow honestly we could just start a whole YouTube channel and like <laughs> You don't even have to come to Berkeley. <laughs> no. <Like> just, <laughs> you come get learned right here. Let's mm -hmm. go. <laughs> we could. No, but low key, honestly, like educating the masses and taking back what we know to our communities, like that has to happen. I, I don't want to harbor all this information. Like I want to put it out there. Like y'all need to know. Disseminate. Yeah, y'all need to know. <laughs> and here's the thing is like a lot of us do know this because we've lived through it, right? Oh, shit. But then just like being able to actually develop a vocabulary and talk about mm -hmm. it and like be in places where you can talk about your experiences with other people is its own thing too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's intimidating um, because you see somebody else and how woke or how eloquent that they are mm -hmm. and you're like damn that's like I don't want to mess up I don't want to trip up and say the wrong thing mm -hmm. or like what if I what I'm saying isn't as valid which is like not true and it's a journey it's non-linear and you're constantly deconstructing what has been ingrained in us sadly mm -hmm. so honestly, it's never too late to deconstruct like thing Wait, yeah, definitely highlight your favorite artists, hype them up. Like, yes, yes. Let's be, hype up your friends, your creative your friends. Your friends. Put Key. your money in your friends' pockets. If you are supporting a creator that isn't like you, your money is going towards them when it could be. I mean, you know, if you like their stuff, do, do they deserve mm -hmm. support. Everybody deserves support, you know? Like I said, a lot of this revenue, like these whole streams and circuits that we don't really stop to think about make a difference. Mm -hmm. So put your su monetary support in your friends' pockets. And I know that might sound weird, but <laughs> that, does, right. that, is, that monetary support is a form of support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just saying, you know, just saying. Yeah, let us know what we should listen to. Mm -hmm. I would love to get some suggestions on um, podcasts, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, people I should be following to diversify my timeline. Diversify your timeline mm -hmm. because if you're following everybody that looks the same and has the same opinion, has the same opinions because they don't, but maybe they're just trying to be socially desirable and come off that way, mm -hmm. um, then you're getting caught in this like bubble. Yeah. You don't want that. And this one. Thank you for helping me launch this. And this is a series, you know, like we're going to be bringing all sorts of people here like I want to bring next week I'm bringing in a scientist like taking up this space Ooh. what that's like for them as well because there's not a lot of us in that space to begin with and the funding there is scarce when you're not like connected mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of politics mm -hmm. um, that go on in creative spaces in academia mm -hmm. in academia yeah. in academia <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because we're all a part of that. And honestly, big shout out to all of my babes that do give me the makeup to do what I do. That is, at, like, if you're an influencer and if you see, like, one of your homegirls, like, trying to start out, like, that's, you're an accomplice. You're not just an ally because allyship is like, oh, yeah, I love you, right? You know, like, I support you and I'm for you. But an accomplice will go out of their way. So thank you. 
Thank you for that. This is what my insides feel like. <laughs> well, is there any um, words of wisdom you want to leave them with? I know it sounds really basic, but it's just so true. Do you and figure you out before you do that. I think like you hear that all the time, but the hardest part is getting to know who you are and what you stand for and what your values are and um, the challenges that you face, recognizing those and like just get to know yourself and um, like how you work. Because a lot of times we um, go throughout life, but we don't really stop and reflect what our actions really mean or yeah. why we execute them or why we're not executing them. Mm -hmm. And always question why. Always ask why. In whatever space you might be in, ask why. That's, you know? yeah, that's another great one. In any space. Well, goodbye. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap. Um. <laughs> All right, we gotta go take up space somewhere else now. <laughs> wow. Teresa, a queen. Just